And for more on this developing story, we've reached John Funk in Coquitlam, B.C. He is a stunt coordinator and special effects technician, and he also has a license to supply guns for use on film sets. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. So first I want to ask, uh, you know, we know on this movie set in New Mexico, there was an on-set armorer. What exactly yes. is the job of an on-set armorer? What, what do they do to make sure that these scenarios are, are safe? Well, they are in charge of the guns. They report to the props master. And their job fundamentally is to make sure that uh, people feel safe around a cold gun or if a gun is hot, firing blanks, uh, to make sure that's done safely and, and follows the protocols. We have an organization in, in BC where I'm from, it's called ActSafe, and they publish um, those policies and send it out to, to people with call sheets and so forth. So the, the rules and the protocols are fairly well known. So in this particular case, we know that uh, we're seeing all of these reports saying that it was referred to as a cold gun. What does that actually mean for our viewers who are not familiar with these terms? Well, a cold gun in our vernacular is, is simply, it cannot fire, it, there is nothing, no blank in it. Uh, in, in BC and in Canada, uh, it's forbidden by government policy to have live rounds on a set. So, uh, But still, uh, blanks are dangerous. So. We, if we bring a prop gun that doesn't fire blanks, we we treat it as if it's a real firearm. We show the cast and crew that it's uh, uh, it's a clear and safe gun, and therefore uh, referred by the first AD on the radios that it's we have a cold gun on set. Now, you know, according to reports in the Los Angeles Times, uh, three crew members who were on set told the Times that there were two accidental prop gun discharges before Thursday. Wondering how frequently this sort of a situation occurs. Well, in my experience, it's not frequent. Uh, in Canada, we have a lot of um, regulation and, uh, you know, the authorities that look look after this sort of thing do a, a pretty good job of informing everybody how it works. But, you know, I mean, if you look at other industries, there are accidents. The same as in the film industry, you know, in Canada, there are accidents. Things can happen. Things can go wrong. You, nothing is ever perfect. You know, I think a lot of people who watch movies would assume that a lot of those guns are not real guns, um, that they, they wouldn't actually be able to fire, as we saw in uh, this particular incident here. Why are fake guns, uh, for lack of a better word, not used? Well, it depends on, on how the scene is unfolding and the distance from the camera, the distance, you know, with the players involved in that scene. So some some scenes, you know, they want, uh, and some productions want a big flash that only gunpowder can generate, uh, and they want a gun to have a realistic recoil, so the actor doesn't have to mime or, or act. In fact, that uh, recoil is happening. So, you know, sometimes uh, productions use what's called an airsoft blowback, and it's a gas-driven. Uh, Gun and it makes it makes the gun look like it's uh, firing, but of course they have to put a shell pitching out and they have to put muzzle flash in post, and that's that's what people are advocating uh, uh, considerably in the, in at least in Canada that we go to that. The only problem is is that the biggest market for production in Canada is the United States, and people know when it's uh, an airsoft blowback because it doesn't look very realistic. So there's always this trade-off uh, to try and get something that feels realistic, looks realistic, but is still safe. You know, in uh, our reporter piece, we know that there has been news coming out since this particular incident that at least one production said that it is no longer going to be using real guns on set. Do you think that there will be other productions that will move uh, in that same direction, given what we've seen here? It's already happened. Uh, productions are using uh, blowback airsoft uh, quite a bit more than, than uh, and, and don't use gunpowder anymore. Uh, I personally don't use gunpowder uh, in my blank firing scenes that I work on. Uh, I use an uh, ammunition uh, manufactured in Montreal, Canada, 
called Simunition, and we we'll use that on set. It has good recoil, feels realistic to the actor. It doesn't require hearing protection, which is something that gunpowder does. And the rounds are green. It's a chemical reaction, not gunpowder. So there is, there are alternative technologies for making guns look dramatic on set. Um, they don't, you don't necessarily have to use a gunpowder blank, which is inherently a bit dangerous and and um, it's it's more time consuming to work with than other technologies. Well, you know, John, thank you so much for giving us some insight and understanding on this tragic news story. We appreciate your time today. Oh, thank you for having me.